Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ, the living God. Welcome to Jesus God Incarnate Ministries, where I give you all things Jesus. So if you want some of that, like, subscribe, share, and we will catch you in this video. So today is going to be a, a teaching moment, but it's going to be a little, um, <clears throat> uh, it's, it's going to be a little peculiar in terms of what I explain because God has kind of given me a unique way of explaining things. So you'll see exactly what I mean. So, um, uh, schizophrenia, right, is typically, well, not typically, there's no known cure right now, right? So, so there is no, uh, human that once you're diagnosed with it, the best thing we could do is just maintain it, right? Like, uh, get, get some medication, some therapy, some other, wh whatever form you might actually, that might actually be good for your level. But, um, the reason why I say schizophrenia is dangerous and that it needs to be contained sooner than later, depending on the calling that God has for your life and depending on if the devil is threatened with your life, um, he's going to uh, ramp up everything that he has so that you uh, will be hindered in, in, what, in what you need to do, right? I'll explain why. Because I've been diagnosed and then I actually got healed of it. So I'm an actual like walking medical miracle. Like it's like the dude in uh, the Bible, like Legion, that lost his mind. It was breaking chains and screaming on night. That's my story, right? Quite literally, that is my story. So um, I'm going to explain why humans diagnosed with schizophrenia are a very, they're an anomaly. They're a peculiar group of people, right? So... Um, your, your average human, right? Let's just say this is, um, this is a normal, normal. Let's just say this is, uh, I need to write a little. Okay. Normal, right? This is normal. Okay, so um, a normal mind, and this mind is, it's like this, right? In terms of its, in terms of its uh, capacity and thoughts and all that stuff, right? And then this is, this is a diagnosed mind. And this right here is a diagnosed mind of, of like schizophrenia or some kind of like mental disorder, right? And, and this, this is from just what I know about it, experiencing it and um, walking and living through it and then coming back to sanity, right? So the reason why I say that schizophrenia is dangerous is because the human mind normally operates within a small parameter. For the people that have schizophrenia that see things it gets expanded like 10 times more. Like your imagination gets blown up so much that you see and understand things outside of the realm of what is normal, right? The only reason why it's dangerous is because if you were to remain diagnosed and not remove all the spirits attached with it, that is dangerous because now the devil has a lot more imagination given to you. Your mind is quite literally stretched. Your imagination is literally opened up to other realms, other like thoughts, other ways of thinking that would not be like, first off, the sheer size of it, right? This, this is just like my experience and, and what I understand about it and seeing God giving me wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the spiritual realm. The devil opens up your mind for all those diagnosed with schizophrenia so much so that a normal mind here will fit here, like I said, like eight, ten times, right? So whatever this diagnosed mind thinks is normal, they think it's crazy. A normal mind will think it's crazy. Do you think it's crazy that I actually believed my mom was an alien? Because I actually did. I'm not playing. Like I actually believed my mom was an alien. I actually believed some of the stuff that I saw. I actually believed it only because I went from a normal mind and it got ripped so much so that it went into a diagnosed mind. It's dangerous in two ways. It's dangerous if this person remains here because typically speaking, right, 
person with schizophrenia will, they will fall into three categories usually. Well, I guess four, right? So they will fall into either they relapse over and over again. You're going to be in and out. They're going to be in and out of hospitals or they're going to be in and out of jail, right? Or they're going to be homeless and eventually like get killed or commit suicide or some way, somehow like die, like uh, overdose on something, right? Their, their, their life is going to pretty much like end in that. Then there's, there, there's a couple more categories that can happen. You can come back to society functioning and periodically have like uh, episodes because when you take medication for a while, your body gets used to it and then it grows a tolerance to it. So you have to switch the medication or adjust the dose of the medication, right? So for, for it to maintain, right? And then there's another class that's like that, that um, like another branch of people diagnosed that you will get on medication and it doesn't even seem like you have it. People that not now meet you won't even recognize that you have it. That's what we call functioning, right? Like a functioning person with schizophrenia because you've, you've entered into that 1%, right? Like, uh, I, I have, like I said, I have a PhD friend, right? They, they, in psychology and all that stuff. I'm talking bachelor's, master's and psychology or, and, and PhD in, in, in uh, medical, uh, mental health and all that stuff, right? So uh, they said 1% of the world or roughly so, you, you can look all this stuff up too. It's not just me telling you stuff for no reason, right? About roughly 1% of the world has been diagnosed with schizophrenia. Although there is 1% of that 1%, that is functioning. So when you meet me, when you if you would have met me in the time that I was taking medication, you wouldn't have known that I had schizophrenia, even though I was on medication, right? That's functioning. You go back into society and it's like it's like nobody knows because you're you're so well maintained in whatever you might be doing, right? Whether it be medication plus therapy, medication plus therapy plus like whatever it is that you do, having a decent job or or whatever, right? But then there's an anomaly. And then now this is where I fall in, right? I'm a I'm one per, out of the world's people. One percent of those world are diagnosed with schizophrenia. I'm there. One percent of that one percent goes back to functioning while on medication. I was there, and then a percentage of that one percent of that one percent gets cured. Listen to me when I say. There's no cure for this. <laughs> There's no cure for what I'm telling you. That's why Jesus is so good. He's the only cure, right? So so now the reason why it's dangerous in two ways, right? If this person stays here without being healed, it it it's split pretty much like either they're going to do something or they're going to they're going to end up in one of those five classes, right? It's very 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 it just kind of gets narrow and narrower. Like I'm one of maybe like maybe, maybe like 10, 15,000 people in the world, maybe 20 or 30 at the max that are actually healed, right? Like to, to, to the degree, right? Like the, 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 that are public with it, I guess. Is it like there's, there's essentially nobody with, with this stuff, right? So this is, this is like new to the world that it's even possible for somebody to get like healed from this stuff. Like this, literally there is no cure. Like you got to wrap your mind around what I'm saying. There is no cure for schizophrenia. That's it. There's no cure. And I've been cured, right? So that's, that's what I'm saying. So it's dangerous in terms of if this person gets cured like I am, they have a huge imagination that's bigger than the normal person. The normal person thinks within this parameter, right? Connecting it back to faith. Let's say, for example, there is a spirit of um, of like depression or something, right? That's like, actually, let's just make it bigger. That's like a good 60% of the person's mind, right? This is just, this is just one spirit. Let's just take the same spirit Put it right here. You see what I'm saying? Like, this is like 60% of a normal person's mind, but the same depression, depressive spirit is maybe like one, one thirteenth 
of that person's mind. You, you, you see what I'm saying? You can have way more demons in the same space of this person's mind. That's why they're so dangerous. Because now you have a spirit of depression, right? Now you have a spirit of, of murder, right? Now you have a spirit, right, of suicide, right? Now you have a spirit of insanity, right? It can keep on going, right? It can keep on going. This person has a much bigger capacity to hold a lot more demons. That's why we're so unstable, folks. We have a lot more capacity to hold a lot more demons mentally. Look, look at this person. One spirit filled up like, so, so when you're talking about like a normal Christian, right? Like I was saying before, like the, 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 the common Christian, right? This is common, uncommon. This is the few. This is the elite. And then this is like the God select. Like prophets and stuff like are here. The, the, this one is closed off. No one can be Moses, right? No one can be this. You, you see what I'm saying? So like, this is what I mean. So like the common Christian, right, would be right here. They would have like a normal mind. They, they tell this demon to go in Jesus name and it leaves, right? You tell this demon to go, it leaves, it comes back, it brings four more of its friends. You tell this demon to leave, it comes back, it brings a bunch of more of its friends, right? So now you have this person, they, they probably get into drugs, right? Like I, I did, I got into to taking shrooms and smoking and drinking and all this other stuff, right? Taking acid, I took it like one time, right? Now they get into drugs. Now they get into addictions, right? Now, now they, they, they now possibly, right? Like I, I didn't, but the, uh, they, 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 they get into sex, right? Now, now, now this person's dealing with, with, uh, with depression, with insanity, with suicidal spirits, and with murder, right? And it just keeps going. It just keeps going, possibly with legion, right? And the list goes on and on, right? Now they're not drugs, addiction, sex. Now let's just say the world, right? Now they're into the world. And this person's more and more unstable, right? I'm not saying that this person is not unstable. I'm just saying this one spirit weighs way heavier on a normal mind than a diagnosed mind because a diagnosed mind is way more expansive and has way more room for certain things for it to take place like this. You see what I'm saying? So, so now the common Christian, right, would be something like this, that you tell this person, hey, this person has a spirit of this. Let's cast it out. Boom. One spirit. Now they're clear. Boom, one spirit. Oh, well, now this person has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And then Legion is like 6,000, right? You gotta think, the demoniac had a legion inside of him. 6,000, right? Up to 6,000 Roman soldiers, What was which, which is what con was considered legion, right? So you have to think, this man has the capacity to hold six, Let's think about this, for example. Mary Magdalene had seven. What? She had only seven spirits that were casted out of her. Are, are, are you picking up what I'm putting down? The demoniac had legion. 6,000. That's like 900 times more spirits in one person. Does that make sense? Why this is so crucial? So the reason why I bring this up, right, is because when, when the diagnosed mind gets cleared, such as myself, look how much room God has to move. Look how much new soil there is for God to plant. Look how many seeds God can plant here. Look how many trees can grow here. Look how many, how much holiness this person is going to experience. 
Let's, let, let's see how much room for anointing does this person have? And I'm not saying that this person, right? You clear, you clear this person. God will move. Can you fit more stuff into a four by, uh, 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 a sedan than you can into a semi truck? No, no. There's some things that you can fit into a semi truck that are the size of the car itself. That's what we're talking about here. That's why certain things I say are just the way that they are because God has a lot more room to move inside of me, which is nothing bad. Like you, you don't have to be ashamed just because you're this. Like, like if if there's if there's a if there is a business owner and the janitor is ashamed to be the janitor because the CEO walks by, the CEO is not doing the best job at re, like the janitor saves that CEO life. The janitor quite literally saving lives every day. I don't know if you guys realize it, but people who 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 do stuff at uh, like uh, at a grocery store, for example, they bring back the carts. They're saving lives. But let me break down how you are saving a life from like the a car might hit the might hit the um, hit the cart. People can't come in, or there's a cart that just rolls by, and then it hits a kid. The kid falls. The kid dies. God forbid. But there's a cart person that comes by, removes those carts and brings it inside. They're bringing more than just life. They're actually saving lives. Like you got to think about this for a second. This is what I mean by God has a lot more room to work in a person like this. I'm just like a logical person that breaks stuff down. But when I say they actually are saving lives, I literally mean they are actually saving lives. People might think it's like, oh no, that's too much. Okay, fire all your cart people at like a, a Safeway and see how many accidents start happening in, in, the, in the parking lot. And then see how many, eventually, how many uh, accidents or, or how many injuries will uh, occur from that. And then that business is going to die. There, once you find out that the, there's no person bringing the cart stuff and it's always chaos, they're not coming there anymore. And you better hope so, somebody doesn't like... People are reckless, right? In terms of like pe people that like, there's no common courtesy in terms of if there's a cart in the way that somebody could move it. Now nah, somebody else move it. Now nah, they got this. Now nah, they got, you know what I'm saying? So it's like for somebody to remove a cart that's paid to remove a cart, they're saving lives. For that janitor to, to keep the floor clean, if the CEO came and there is no janitor and there's like, and the floor is wet or, or dirty or whatever it is, that CEO can slip and fall and crack their head and die. Y'all think it's a game, but it's not. The janitor actually saves lives. The cart person actually saves lives. Like, really actually does. Like, it's, it's just, it, it is what it is, right? So, like, and th that's the part where, like, if, if there's a normal mind, right? Like, you don't have to be intimidated by a mind like mine, like this. It, it doesn't, it, like, we are both working for the kingdom of God. That's it. It's just like, just like God says, like, to each whom he gives uh, his measure, the measure of faith, God determines that, right? You can ask God to increase your faith, but that just depends on if you're in, uh, if you're if you're led to by the counseling of whoever you are being counseled by, like a wise counselor or like in terms of godly counsel, I mean, right? Or like reading the word and you get impressed to ask God, like, yo, I, I increase my faith, right? But like the reason why this is dangerous is because it's dangerous for the kingdom of Satan. Because if this person gets saved like I did and then actually get cured of it, which is incurable, like I said before, then now I have a lot more room to expose what the kingdom of Satan is able to do and not able to do, right? So like the way that you can, okay, so now I removed a lot of spirits, right? Now, now I have faith, I have prayer, I have, um, I have holiness, right? I have, I have joy. I have peace, right? I have, I have the, the fruits, the, the, the fruits of the spirit, right? Let's just, I have like the fruits of the spirit, which would be like the love, peace, patience, kindness, and all that stuff, right? Now I have understanding. Now I have wisdom. Now I have knowledge. Now I, 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 um, now I have spiritual warfare, right? Now I have all these things that I can use to damage the kingdom of Satan and expand the kingdom of God, right? A normal person can have it, 
but not to the same degree, which is fine, right? Like you don't have to be someone that, you know, you can have small faith, you can have small peace, you can have small uh, wisdom and knowledge and stuff like that. As long as you're using what you've been given, God will increase it. That's just another law of God. God increases to those who are, are uh, responsible and faithful with little, he will increase it. So if you are, you are faithful with, with like your prayer, God will increase your mind, right? God will increase your mind. Now, now you go from this mind to this one. And then when, when you're faithful with this, right? You're faithful with this, God will increase it more, right? So this, this is all, but this right here, right? The reason why diagnosed minds are stretched out because it's done in a demonic way, but I can't go back. I can't unsee some of the stuff that I saw. Like, I, I can't, uh, like, shrink my imagination. It's impossible for me to, right? So that's why it was stretched through this way, but then God immediately swoops in, or at least for me, right? And God wants to swoop in for people with di diagnosis, schizophrenia, or some kind of mental disorder, because there's ways to go about it, right? But this is the reason why it's so dangerous. If this person isn't filled with stuff of God and of the other stuff, like the demonic things, that's where it could turn bad. But that's why it, it needs it needs immediate attention. But that's the thing. The church is lacking in a lot of stuff. That's where we come in, the, the preachers, the teachers and all that stuff to tell you, yo, there's more to this Bible than just what you're reading on. Some, like the, you're, give, you're given a watered down gospel, essentially. Right. And, and it, there's, there's no power demonstrated. Now it's increasing in terms of that because the times are fleeting in terms of peace. Right. But that's where all, all the things that that one needs is within the pages of the Bible, right? So like, I guess this is, this is a, a word of wisdom, right? Like if you, if you need to like learn anything, go to the word, I promise you. There is so much there that it's just, it's almost baffling that God literally gives us no excuse, that you have what you need you literally have what you need in the word of God, right? It's, you, weren't, you weren't left void. You weren't left uh, empty-handed, right? If you don't have access to reading it, listen to it. If you don't have access to listening to it, ask somebody to, to, to read it to you or, 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 or something like that, right? And then know that these people were real people. They weren't, they, they, these aren't like stories like, oh, David and Goliath. Like, no, they ate, they slept, they had thoughts, they had their flesh, they had their temptations, they had their good days, they had their bad days, right? They, they, they woke up with snot on their whatever, right? They, they woke up with, with the eye booger. They, 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 some of them drooled. Some, Moses was, he, the, 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 he had a speech impediment. Like, there's a lot of stuff. You got to think these people are just real life people like you and I. Just back then, that's, they, they just live different. That's it, right? But you, you got to think these people are like the demoniac was a real person. Like, he was alive. He ate. He slept. He went to the bathroom, right? So, like, you, you, you got to think to yourself, like, hmm. So when you're reading the word and you're reading some of these stories, you have to think, like, put yourself there. You all of a sudden, your brother, Lazarus, has, has been dead for four days. And then Jesus says he's going to raise him again. And you're like, oh, no, it's all good, bro. Like, the person is mourning. Listen, they're mourning that, they're, that their brother's been dead for four days. And then Jesus is like, bro, why y'all crying? Like, what are, you, what are you guys talking about? Lazarus, come out. And then he comes out, you're like, what? What? He's alive? Like, you have to think, these were real life people. If you literally saw someone, like your 12 year old daughter died from a fever, and then Jesus comes through and be like, why are you guys crying? Like, what, what are you guys wrong? What, what's, wrong? what's wrong with you guys? And they start mocking him and say, ha, what are you going to do? You're just Jesus. He gets, he gets upset. 
He, he's ha he hasn't thrown out. He's like, everybody leave. Y'all being goofy. Y'all don't even believe what I'm about to do. So now you have this person that essentially does that very thing. That's what I mean. Like, these are like real life people. Like, somebody's daughter died. And then that daughter that was dead came back to life. There was somebody that was so crazy that they, they broke chains that they bound him with and would scream all night. You guys gotta catch what I'm saying. This isn't no normal, like, and then they kicked Jesus out of the city because they were afraid because they knew this is the man that was so crazy we couldn't bind him we we could bind him but he would break the the chains now he's in a sound mind jesus please leave you're freaking us out but why are you afraid that this is the dude that was in a sound mind and then he's telling everybody about what god has done for him and they're like, well, dang, like you are the dude. We chained you up over and over again. And you, you're actually talking to me with the, you ain't yelling at me right now. You ain't foaming at the mouth. You ain't naked. Like you got to think these, these are like real life people, right? So, so that's why I say the stuff is dangerous. If it doesn't get taken care of quickly. So that's why I urge everybody Share this, share this platform or go start researching it on your own. I don't care if you share this platform to the degree that I, I want you guys free of whatever you're dealing with. Because I'm somebody that got free of what I was dealing with and what many are dealing with. Like you, you, you got to understand, like I said, there's no cure for what, I'm, what, what I dealt with. But Jesus, God Almighty, whoo, that's where it is. Because if somebody gets cured of schizophrenia, and then they go testify and there's no known cure. Like if I go back to my doctor right now, they're going to be like jaw dropped. Like, I'm like what? How? Like, there's no cure for this stuff. But I'm, a, I'm more sound minded than I was before I got there. You see what I'm saying? So like God is good, right? So like if there's anyone dealing with this stuff, I pray that God reveals to you that there is that you need a level of discernment. Somebody's going to get set free, right? But you need a level of discernment to know that this is not you. When you hear, when think about the temptation of Jesus, the second temptation, the devil showed him visions of the world in a moment of time. The devil can show you something. Why don't you think the devil can place thoughts in your head? We see that he placed a thought, a vision before Jesus. Jesus? He placed a thought before Jesus? So why can't he place a thought before you? A person that is already fallen, sin time and time and time and time and time again. Jesus, God Almighty in the flesh, was given a, a, a vision by the devil. How much more us, right? That's what I mean, folks. That this is, it's very, it's very serious. Because... I want you guys to get free because then this is a testament that I don't want to be the only walking medical miracle on this earth. I want everybody that deals with something like this to be walking medical miracles and give praise to Jesus because it is by his name that we heal the sick. And it is by us repenting, believing, being drawn in by God and then being washed in the blood of God and, and, and being baptized in the Holy Spirit that, that, that we can actually walk in the power the demonstration of the power of God, not just the talking and the preaching and the teaching of the power of God, but the demonstration of the power of God. So, if these videos bless you, like, subscribe, share, share this stuff, hit the notification bell. I'll eventually start going live, but it's gonna probably be like way later. But um, just when, when I get some time and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, if, if you are sincerely seeking, like, some freedom in this stuff, I have a playlist. I'll list it. I'll, I'll link it below so you kind of see 
like the breakdown of how I actually got free. And then I'll link below the full, um, the full testimony of me getting uh, schizophrenia deliverance as well. So yeah, we will catch you on the next one. Peace.